Well, uh, hello, I'm coming to you on the 11th of October, 2022. And again, I'd like to say some things about uh, an update on, on Ukraine. Uh, well, uh, there are a couple of things I'd like to uh, deal with today, and that is the narrative uh, that is uh, patently anti-Ukrainian. And... Um, uh, this narrative has uh, kind of two arguments. One is that Ukraine cannot win a war against uh, Russia because Russia's population is so much greater and that uh, Russia at one time was considered the uh, second strongest military in uh, the world. I would, uh, I would uh, answer that by saying that uh, Russia is now the second best military in Ukraine. Uh, but uh, let's just take that argument and kind of do, uh, put it aside. Uh, and that is just by saying that the current military situation favors the Ukrainians. And in fact, someone as, as uh, up on, on, on the Russian military as uh, Michael Kaufman, who is a uh, analyst uh, with the... Uh, as with CNN, CNA, and uh, with the Keenan Institute at the Woodrow Wilson School, has said that uh, uh, there is a distinct possibility, a very strong possibility, that Ukraine will defeat the, the Russians by next year, uh, sometime late next year. Um, this uh, uh, analysis has been... Uh, uh, the, confirmed or at least has been agreed to by uh, people as as capable as uh, Lieutenant uh, General retired uh, Ben Hodges and former CIA and retired General David Petraeus. So the Russian military, which has taken, you know, incredible casualties and, and, and has suffered a, just devastating losses in, in uh, material and armaments, uh, is poised to be defeated. Uh, I, I don't think any sensible uh, analyst looking at the situation would disagree with that. And most analysts, I think, are, are seeing Russia's defeat on the horizon. Um, so that argument, I think, can be easily dispensed with. Uh, the uh, second argument, that is that uh, the United States is harming itself economically by supporting the, the, uh, the Ukrainian war effort uh, to the tune of $40 billion, I, I think that is easily answerable. Um, there are two arguments. One is the uh, deontological argument that people have a right to live in peace and should not be invaded. And in order to support a rules-based international system, we should expend uh, the necessary funds to assure a Ukrainian victory. Otherwise, uh, Putin will continue to destabilize the region and we may be forced to defend NATO uh, on the basis of our alliance obligations. This would entail tremendous losses in, um, in, in uh, economic terms, that is, I don't think military, conventional military arguments uh, against facing Russia, I think, have been dispensed with, given the inner rot of the Russian military, which is incapable of doing almost anything except targeting civilians. But uh, economic dislocation, and uh, I'm sure some uh, losses in lives of Americans, I think that uh, is, I mean, the, the amount of money we are expending in supporting Ukrainians, uh, I think is well spent if it saves American lives. And, and, and prevents further economic dislocation. That is the kind of deontological argument that is people have rights uh, to live peacefully. We don't want any more bloodshed. So the quicker we end this war, the quicker uh, we can get back to some type of nor normalcy and therefore uh, prevent any greater loss of life. But just in cold terms, in cold realpolitik terms, uh, the, the investment we are making in uh, providing support for the Ukrainians at, at the cost of $40 billion, which I would argue even twice, three times that, would, it, it would be worthwhile. 
uh, is, uh, you know, easily uh, countered by arguing that uh, first, the United States is likely to uh, uh, take over at least a large share of Russia's 20% share in arms sales uh, in the world. And uh, you may not know, but the United States in fiscal 2020 uh, basically earned $175 billion from its own arms sales. And the United States has something like 40% of the total arm, uh, arms market share. Russia has to about 20% of, of the market share. And in 2019, it earned, in six months, it earned about $6 billion. Uh, that suggests that Russia earns somewhere between 10 and $12 billion a year in arms sales. Given the fact that U.S. weapons have proven themselves to be vastly superior to anything that the Russians can field, it is uh, the, our role in, the Ukra in Ukraine, I think, uh, augurs very well for an expansion of the U.S. arms market share. Um, so that in itself is, is, it would be a net economic benefit. Uh, in addition to that, there is a, uh, you know, in order to build, rebuild Ukraine, there are estimates uh, between $750 billion and $1.1 trillion dollars the first figure is given by the Ukrainian government, the second figure is given by the European Investment Bank, and some, uh, would, uh, some companies would have to do that rebuilding, and I would, uh, uh, I would suggest that the United States would probably be one of the first in lines for um, Ukrainian contracts uh, to rebuild the country so that that would increase U.S. jobs, U.S. economic uh, activity. In addition to that, there is the uh, the the, the uh, you know kind of side benefit perhaps of um, you know these uh, weapons uh, shipments and under the lend lease program they've already earmarked uh, substantial amounts of of, of, of uh, weapons to be produced for Ukrainian use. Uh, the constant uh, arms shipments to Ukraine may capture some excess dollars and therefore have a salutary effect on inflation. Although I do think that we would have to spend, you know, many, many more times the 40 billion to actually put a dent on in inflation. So in that sense, uh, the economic side of support for Ukraine, I think is easily answerable. We are actually, uh, I think in the end, we will have a net benefit economically from assisting Ukraine. Uh, so that, that argument is, I think, set aside. Um, yesterday, I argued that Putin uh, is uh, facing a, a, a critical situation because of his uh, hold on power. And I mentioned charismatic power, uh, Max Weber's uh, argument or uh, Max Weber's thesis on power, that is where he divided it into three types of power, typology. One being uh, charismatic power, which is the kind of power that uh, Putin has, which is dependent on success. It's dependent on, the, on personal leadership qualities. This has been undermined by the poor performance of both Putin and the Russian military. Uh, and this is where his power is uh, apparently crumbling. Uh, the, the voices that are now heard, discordant voices in the Kremlin and within the Russian military now being heard are a byproduct of a kind of erosion of charismatic power, which is ultimately dependent on, on uh, Putin's success, which is not coming. Um, he will ultimately be defeated and therefore charis his charismatic hold on power will be uh, completely er eroded by the time those, this war ends and he may be uh, retired. Putin doesn't enjoy the kind of traditional authority of the czars, even though he's tried to kind of, as I said yesterday, uh, veil, uh, you know, clothe himself in that uh, autocracy, orthodoxy, nationality argument uh, or uh, uh, 
you know, uh, philosophy of, of, the, of the czars in the 19th century. So uh, he can't rely on that. And illegal authority, which is the third, I mean, you have charismatic power, you have uh, traditional uh, power, and you have legal power. Legal power is based on constitutions and elections and so on. And no one really buys Putin's constitutional legitimacy. Uh, so he has to simply rely on charismatic power. I don't think that's going to hold given his abject failures. And as I said, charismatic power depends on success. Uh, Putin is having very little success on the battlefield and is likely to, un uh, to sustain a significant and clear-cut defeat, I think, uh, within a year or so. Uh, so... I think the situation is very, very dire for Putin, uh, and only those like Tucker Carlson, who's a vacuous fool on this uh, uh, topic, who think that Putin is going to win, uh, when no credible military analyst believes that now, uh, and I would urge you to, uh, to, uh, to look up Michael Kaufman, K-O-F-M-A-N, on YouTube. Uh, in Peru, I mentioned that uh, that YouTube uh, uh, provider, P E R U N, as well. Uh, the, their analysis goes directly uh, against the the idea that Russia can uh, succeed on the battlefield. Now, in Russian military, is, is, the inner rot is staggering. To me, it's just unbelievable that any nation could invade another uh, with the inner rot of, of its military. Um, so I expect Russia to be defeated. I expect Putin to be removed. Thank you.